These testimonials are representative of my or our experiences, but the exact results and experience will be unique and individual to each person. The information provided herein is not medical advice and is not intended to substitute for the advice of your personal physician or other healthcare providers. Well, hello, hello, everybody. This is Leanne Hayden, your host of the Beautiful Bag podcast coming to you from the loft in New Hampshire. As you can see out the window, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see out the window, we got some snow and I got a sweater on. So, <laughs> so winter is here. We're in the end of January, which just means that it's going to warm up soon enough, right? So this week, I'm going to be coming at you in this solo, solo episode with some stats that I learned last week that I found so interesting that I think you are going to find interesting as well. So we are the Beautiful Bag Podcast is a global podcast. And as you know, if you've listened to this over the last, we're in our fourth year, um, we have had, I have had interviews with people or we, we have had interviews with people from all over the world all walks of life, all over the world, all age ranges, all of those things. So when I heard this statistic, it blew my mind. But before we get into it, I want to just remind you guys, if you're wherever you're listening to this podcast from, if it's on Spotify, Apple podcast, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're catching clips of this over on your social media platforms, please do me a favor. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. Um, and if you would please leave a rating and a review, especially if you're on Apple podcast, that would be amazing so that we can get the awareness out. All right. Now, Enough of that. Let's get on with the episode. Okay. So guys, last week I was on a call, um, a brand awareness. It was a brand awareness business, right? Cause I want to get the brand and the awareness of, you know, my personal brand, as well as the beautiful bag, right? That brand, um, it's going to be starting to grow. You're going to see a whole bunch of more things coming out over the next year or two. It's a long-term plan. Um, however, one of the statistics that they were told that they told me when they did research um, for me was that, did you know, now I always knew in the United States, there are between 750,000 to a million people living with an ostomy, right? That's what I knew. I never really understood or never really did my own research, shame on me, to go and see how big we were globally. And this just blew my mind. Because when I first got my ostomy eight years ago, over eight years ago now, I didn't know anybody who had an ostomy, not a single person. So when I heard about it and then I researched or I started looking it up online, I'm like, there's not many people out here in an ostomy. And I thought I was going to be alone. Now, eight years later, right, because of social media and because people are being more and more vocal about being in an ostomy. I've met so many more people. So I knew the community was growing and then working as I do as closely as I do with Hollister, right? Hollister Inc., the manufacturing company for, um, for bags. I started to learn more and more about the community. So I knew that about the U.S. However, I did not know the global number. I did not know the global number. And I'm wondering if you know the global number. If you're watching this before I tell you the global number, Write in the comments, put in the comments how many you think it is. I posted on social media if you want a little hint. <laughs> I posted it on uh, Facebook and on Instagram the other day because it blew my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, 13.5 million people, 13.5 million people around the world are in an ostomy. Does that not blow your mind? Does that not... That number, 13.5 million ostomates around the world, and we happen to be one of them. That can almost bring tears to my eyes because we think, or at least the people that I've spoken to in the beginning, when you're going through this process, and you may be listening to this, we think we're alone right? We don't know anyone else that's out there. We may start to search on social media. We may find some people out there. We may find people who have 
you know, we, there are estimates out there and then I have millions of followers, right? Hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of followers out there. And we know this, but are they all in ostomies? All in ostomies, or are they just following people because they like the content, right? We really don't know. What was that number? 13.5 million people, and you're one of them. Or you may be listening to this podcast going, I want some more information on what life is like to be in an ostomy. And now you know. There are so many of us out there. And so one of the things, and I have notes, right? <laughs> I actually have notes with this podcast, which I usually don't. It's usually like, hey, let's have a conversation. This one here, I'm like, I need some notes on this because one of the other things that I found out was it is 45% female and 55% male. Now, I don't understand why there's, you know, it's basically 50, 50, right? 45, 55, same thing, right? It's basic. It, that's basic. I didn't have not had the breakdown of age ranges or diseases or things like that. And that's another thing that I'm actually going to go in and, and start to research. However, half of them are female, half of them are male. So it's a 50, 50 thing. So it really doesn't have to do with gender, right? So I know that it you know, we have come across people and I've told stories and we've had interviews over the past year of people that are in ostomies because of all different reasons. Um, colorectal cancer, um, sarcoma tumors. That was me. That would be me, right? A sarcoma tumor. I have not met anyone else who had a sarcoma tumor that ended up in an ostomy yet. So if you're out there, I want to meet you. Um, there are people, IB, IBS, IBD, Crohn's, colitis, uh, EDS. There are people who have ostomies because of bacterial infections, or we've had, I've had, we've had people on here who've had, you know, were in accidents, motorcycle accidents, right? There are people on that we've interviewed. There were two people that we interviewed just towards the end of last year. They're in ostomies because they were in so much pain, gastrointestinal pain. They had no, the doctors had no idea. Like they didn't, they couldn't diagnose them with anything. They had no idea what was going on with them. And the second they got an ostomy, all the pain went away. So what's going on, right? What's going on? There's so many different reasons that we can be in there and there's in one. And there's so many different 13.5 million people. We're not alone. Do you know how big that global community is? That's a community. That's why you know, the beautiful bag to me is a community. Yes, we're online. Um, yes, I have, we ha I, I email you guys. I also, I haven't, um, I'm going to take a second because I want to talk to you guys about this. So because I'm connected with people in ostomies through social media, through email, through text messaging sometimes, through connections with other people, through networks, um, through organizations, so there are people all over, right? So it's always like, how do I find my group of people? How do I find my community? How do I know? So I have created, and again, if you're interested in joining, it's free. Um, and everybody's, to me, I was like, you know, it, it's a chat. It's um, the app is called Telegram. If you're interested in joining it, just go over to the website and shoot me an email. Or you know what? Better yet, I'll put the link to it below in the show notes here on the show. And all you need to do is click on the button to join the community. You have to be in an ostomy. You cannot be in this, in this community. If you're not in an ostomy, this is for people who are actually in ostomies. Okay. Um, and again, I'm doing it because like I said, there are people that are in Facebook and they might be in Facebook groups. So there's people that aren't on Facebook. They might be looking at things out on Instagram or YouTube or emails, or you're listening to this podcast, right? And you're like, I need to connect with other people but I'm not sure how. So I created a way to do that. So the link will be in the show notes for you to be able to, you know what, that I, because I want it to be ostomy focused, I'm going to put a link in the show notes for a survey. You have to fill out the survey to get approved. And then you will get an email to be able to join the group there. I need to protect, and I'm only doing it because I need to protect us and the listeners. Um, so We'll do it that way, but there'll be a link in the show notes. <laughs> All right, long story short. Now let's get back to this. Okay, so different cultures, different cultures and different reasons, right? I, we talked about the different 
dis-ease, I don't call it disease, it's dis-ease in our bodies, right? Of reasons why someone may be in an ostomy, right? Because our, our body is not at ease, right? So, but different cultures and different healthcare systems deal with it differently. I've had, we've had guests on here from different cultures and how difficult it was to make choices to be, to be put into an ostomy because some cultures look at it as being dirty, right? Um, which is difficult. And that was an episode that we had last year as well. Different healthcare systems around the world impact ostomy care. We talk about it a lot here um, in the community about how much more nurses and the healthcare system, I shouldn't say nurses, the healthcare system needs to be educated on ostomies. There are 13.5 million around the world, even those 8 billion people, right? That's enough people that you would hope that nurses would understand how to deal with things. And sometimes people come across it and we've had them on the, we've had them here. We've had conversations about it where, you know, there's not a nurse. There's one ostomy nurse in the whole, the whole state of Alaska. Who knew that, right? So it is getting that, it's getting that out there, right? And again, acceptance and quality of life, right? Our quality of life, a lot of people that I've talked to that we've had here on, that we've had, they've had a better quality of life after having their ostomy in place. They can do things they could never do before. They can go out, they can leave their homes. You know, they were in their houses, stuck in their homes. So there's different reasons for it. Um, one of the things that I um, that I did, another thing that I learned or that I heard, I was having a conversation with someone a couple weeks ago and they were telling me how they had to go to Japan. They went to Japan. Um, it was for work. It was, you know, it's in our, it's in, in the ostomy industry. And they, they went to Japan and were doing some work and they really get to know the nurses and the doctors. And they were so surprised in the country, in Japan, the country of Japan, the amount of people that were in ostomies because of cancer in Japan. It's a small island, but there were so many people, they were telling me so many, most, the most he's ever heard. Now, again, the US, how big we are, we're, we're 750,000 to a million. Japan was almost double that from what he said, from what he learned. Now, again, I need to confirm it, but that's what he had said. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that small country? And again, we're doing a lot from a global standpoint of educating, trying to learn to, ed trying to educate people, sharing stories. I mean, again, look on social media and there's good and bad things about social media. Look on social media, the amount of people that are sharing how to change their bags, how they're living their lives, how to work out, how to go to work, right? All the things, all the things, how to eat, dietary tips, all that stuff, right? It is all over the place and we're bringing more and more awareness around it and we're getting better at it. And I mean, look at the ads for some of the companies out there, right? Airy, the um, the company Airy did a lingerie shoot, you know, um, with an ostomate probably seven years ago now. Um, there has been ostomates now in People Magazine. There's been ostomates now on <laughs> being featured um, in Maxim. Like there, we're showing up. People in ostomies are now showing up. So the awareness is starting to really, really, truly get out there. Um, and there's a lot of advocacy in every country has advocacy. We have global advocacy as well. And there's some resources and support that I'm going to talk about too at the end of this episode. So stay tuned for that. And then I'm also going to put links to them in case you're like, you know what, I need to know what organizations, things like that. I've got some of those too. So, you know, if you're listening to this, I'll urge you to share your story. Um, sometimes it's hard. It's not so easy. It's not an easy thing to do. And living life in an ostomy and having to have that decision, there is emotional things that we go through. There's some emotional challenges that we go through, right? There's physical challenges that we go through. And some people are in their ostomies and still have some illness, right? They're still sick. They're still dealing with things. And however, if you can 
if you can share your story with just one person, it doesn't have to be big and blown out, big and blown out. It doesn't have to be that. You don't have to be all out there. But if you could share it with one person, you can make a world of difference. And again, last week I talked about being in an airport. Last week's episode was about travel, but I talked about being in an airport and for the first time and seeing a man being patted down and he had an ostomy bag and his wife was having a panic attack. And I just told her I'm in one too. And it seemed to calm her down. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to be out in a bikini and showing it, showcasing everything out there, but just just bringing a little bit of awareness or getting involved in some of the organizations right? And to help them bring more awareness to it, writing a blog, writing a story, anything, something, right? I'm going to urge you guys to take a little bit of action um, in that awareness and that advocacy, if you can, okay? When you get to the point where you can. So resources and support. There are a bunch of organizations that are out there, tons and tons and tons of them. This is going to be ostomy focused, uh, ostomy focused for now. Okay. So one, and the first one is all that I talk about is United Ostomy Association of of America, UOAA. It's actually ostomy.org. If you're going to look it up now, they're primarily focused in the United States. Okay. So of course, United, the United Ostomy Association of America, right? However, that website, ostomy.org provides resources that can be valuable for ostomates worldwide, guys. It includes educational materials, advocacy information. If you want to become an advocate, um, they, they also have partner links to other organizations in other countries. Last week, I mentioned to you, you can go to ostomy.org and you can even get a travel card. They have travel cards that you can print out and carry with you. So, oh, look, that just did a heart. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you're watching the video, you'll see what I mean. Anyways, um, so they have that, right? So ostomy.org is the United Ostomy Association of America. Um, They also just came out with, they're going to be doing another conference, which we went to last summer. They do them every two years in 2025. So stay, stay tuned for more details on that because last year was amazing when we went last summer and got to meet each other in person. It was so amazing. All right. Next one I'm going to talk about is ostomy cancer. I mean, sorry, ostomy cancer. Canada, I can't even say the word Canada, Ostomy Canada Society. Okay. Now this organization, it offers support. There goes my Boston accent, office support, uh, education and advocacy for Canadians living with an ostomy. Their resources and connections might provide insights and international collabs as well. Their website is ostomycanada.ca. Okay. So that's the second one. Third one, there is an international one, guys, International Ostomy Association. IOA. It's a global network of ostomy associations aimed at improving the quality of life for ostomates worldwide. They provide a platform for sharing information and resources across countries and cultures. All right. Their website, ostomyinternational.org. I've got four more, five more. Um, Colostomy UK. Okay, so the UK based charity supports advocacy with people with stomas. They offer support services, information, advice, all of that. Their website is colostomyuk.org. So if you're in the UK, European European Ostomy Association, it's a coalition of ostomy associations from various European countries. Right. And again, guys, we are, this is a global podcast. If you did not know, we have listeners all over the world, all over the world. I think almost all countries, (laughs) there is somebody listening to this podcast. And I just have to take a second and say, I appreciate you for that. Um, So uh, ostomyeurope.org would be the European Ostomy Association website. There's one in Australia, Australia Council of Stoma Associations. Now they do numerous Uh, represent numerous stoma associations across Australia. Uh, They offer resources and support as well. Their website is Australia, australianstoma.com.au. And then the last one I talk about is Friends of Ostomates Worldwide. Okay. This one provide, it, it focuses on providing ostomy supplies and educational material for ostomates all over the world. Okay. Their website is F-O-W, 
usa.org if you want to get more information. I will keep, I will put all the links to all these associations inside the show notes so that you guys can know I want to get involved. I want to talk to one person, right? How can I get involved? How can I advocate? Because advocate, how can I be an advocate for this? community of ours, right? This ostomy community of ours. I call it the beautiful bag community. How can we do it with the beautiful bag community? Um, you can get involved in one of these associations somehow, some way. All right. So go to their website, you get tons of information from them. Um, and guys, you're not alone. You're not alone. You are one in 13.5 million people around the world. So I want you to know that. Um, and that's all I have for you today. I hope you thought you found this episode informative. That's what this one was supposed to be a little more informative next week. Stay tuned. Okay. Because guys, I made a plan for the podcast for the year. Each month we're going to get themed. We're, <laughs> we're starting to get themed. We're getting back into having some, there's some interviews coming up soon. There's some interviews coming up. Um, so February is all going to is going to be all about. Can you guess it? Yeah, love and relationships. Valentine's Day is in February, so we're going to talk about love and relationships. We're going to have a couple of in, I have a couple of interviews, a couple of solo episodes, and um, yeah, thank you for always making this podcast uh, special, and thank you for helping it grow, and thank you for sending me the emails, guys, because sometimes over the years I've said is this making a difference? Is this podcast making a difference? And my goal, my, my goal, my mission is to at least help one person, right? And so if it's helping one person, I know it's making a difference. And, um, every time I think that one of you will email me. <laughs> so I appreciate those emails. I do respond to everything. It's me. I respond to everything that I get. And, um, Guys, thank you again for listening. Again, share, share this episode if you found it valuable. Share the insights. If you're sharing the insights, tag me on there. I'll reshare it onto my socials as well. And let's go on and have an absolutely beautiful bag of a day. And we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.